Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It really is an honor and a privilege to have you with us. Tonight, things are gonna be a little bit different because I'm speaking. Dustin is preparing for Sunday, so I get the honor and the privilege of sharing with you something that has been on my heart so much this past week and has been challenging me. It's so simple, but it has been challenging me in such great ways. I wanna tell you that about a week ago, um, I went out for a run and I am officially out of contacts, so I've been relying on my glasses. Thank you, coronavirus. But I didn't want to run with my glasses because they do like this number and they're going this way and that and it's frustrating, it's annoying and it gets in the way. So I decided I'm going to run without my glasses. And it was so strange. It was disorienting and I couldn't see things clearly. I, you know, I could see about two feet in front of me and that was enough to keep going. And I'm basically like halfway to blind. So it's not horrible, but it's not great. I can't see pinpoint definition like when I can with my glasses on, but I was running and I got through the run and it was weird and it was strange. And as I was thinking about that, it was like, I am so dependent on this guide. And as I was thinking about that dependence, I was reminded of my daughter and a little story that happened a couple weeks ago. See, I was reading her this incredible book called Found, which is a children's book, basically talking about Psalms 23, and it puts it in their language. And I had read it to her one time that day, and, and then she told me that she wanted to read it to me. And so she picks it up and she starts reading, God is my shepherd. And I'm his little lamb, is what she tells me. And she goes, he feeds me. And she says, he guides me. And that's what she kept saying over and over as we read through the rest of the book. He guides me. He guides me. He guides me. And this has basically, this has basically become my constant reminder over the last few weeks that I am a little sheep. And God is my shepherd. And he is guiding me. He guides me so simple and so complex. And so I know we do a million and a half sermons about Psalms 23 and I know you've heard it and you know it by heart. It's the most memorized chapter in the entire Bible, but maybe there's a reason it's the most memorized because there's so much truth and there's so much hope to be found in those words. So if you could bear with me tonight, once again, as we find rest and hope in these words, we're gonna look at Psalms 23, the whole chapter tonight, The Good Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Jesus is our good shepherd. You know, this metaphor of describing Jesus as a shepherd describes the strong authority and the tender care exercised by our king. I don't know if you're aware of this, but sheep are dumb. Like, they are dumb dumb from what i was reading to plan and prepare sheep can't even find their own water to drink they are fully dependent upon the shepherd but these sheep are the shepherd's livelihood this is his job this is what he does he is invested in them their success is his success he cares for them as his own but honestly, this shepherd has his hands full with these sheep. You see, he's got to find a pasture for food and, and water and provide shelter. I mean, he's moving from place to place. He's not carrying a tent with him. He's got to build shepherd. And sometimes that means sleeping in front of them to protect them. He's got to give them medication, help bring life in birth. And he's got to defend them from predators, etc. Sheep are virtually helpless without aid. And you know, the more I learned about this helplessness of the sheep, the more amazed I am at the shepherd. You see, the shepherd would go to extraordinary lengths to protect his flock. I mean, he carries a rod and a staff. Those aren't like fancy little accoutrements that you're carrying around like, hey guys, look how cool I am with these things I carry around. No, they had purpose. 
these tools had a purpose and the purpose was to guide the sheep and to beat up predators. And we're not just talking about like wolves. Like I'm pretty sure there were lions in this vicinity too, from what we can read in the Bible. Like there were lions. Like, yeah, no, count me out on the whole lion clubbing shepherd job. Like not for me. So this was an intense job. It provided, I mean, it was 24 seven, but the shepherd isn't just leading with his staff. This is the part that I love. He has this incredible ability to communicate with his sheep. Shepherds could shep shepherds could separate their sheep from others grazing with them simply by calling them. The sheep recognized his voice and they obeyed when he called. That's the incredible thing. They didn't go, huh? Who was that? No, they moved. When he called, it was time to go. They moved. In John 10, we see Jesus speaking to Pharisees and others and explains that he himself is the good shepherd of his sheep. Verses three through four tell us that the sheep listen to the shepherd's voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. His sheep follow him because they know his voice. They follow him because they know his voice. He guides me. I'm telling you, this has wrecked me this week. They know his voice. Our shepherd, he guides me. You don't get to know someone and obey them instinctively by spending trace small amounts of time with them. You see, it takes devotion to follow, to be led, to be cared for, to be fed, to be protected, to be sheltered. He is guiding me, but only if I allow him to. Only if I dedicate time to that relationship. Only if I learn to trust him and stop thinking I can do this on my own. I need him with me. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, isn't constantly with me. But what I am saying is that we, the maybe not so smart sheep, have a tendency to wander off and think that we don't need to be led. I shared this story earlier about my running basically blind. But what I didn't tell you is that about five minutes into my run, my disorientation stopped. And I started to notice that I couldn't see, or I started to not notice that I couldn't see things clearly. I wasn't bothered by the fact that I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman 20 feet ahead of me. I didn't care if there was a snake two feet to my left or my right. I got used to my blindness. I became okay with the lack of direction and clarity. And by the time I got home, I didn't even care that I couldn't see. I was doing me, I was fine, I could handle it. But I didn't even know that I wasn't fine. You see, when I put, when I put my guides back on, I was overwhelmed, I was overwhelmed with clarity security and confidence that what I was seeing through these lenses was true. I knew I couldn't be led down the wrong path because my guide was true and perfect. Tonight, I want to remind you that the shepherd, our guide, is perfect. He isn't going to lead us down paths of doom and gloom and despair and when we find ourselves in circumstances that are dark and scary, we see from Psalms 23 that he is with us. He is providing us rest. He is giving us reprieve. His goodness and faithful love are pursuing us as we follow him. This goodness and this faithful love are what gets me most about shepherds and the lengths that they would go for their flock. You see, when predators come, and they most certainly always will, and they always do, the shepherd is willing and ready to lay down his life so that his sheep can live. The hired hands that the shepherd has brought in, they would run, they would flee. They don't care because they're not invested. But this is a good shepherd and he takes care of his own. Christ is our good shepherd. John 10 verse 11 tells us in Jesus' own words, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Christ laid down his life for you and for me. He bore our sin and its weight on the cross. 
He carried our shame. He felt it all. And because of this sacrifice, this gift, we have life and life abundantly. But we must choose to follow him like a little sheep. We must choose to follow the shepherd. We must hear his voice and obey him. And we must allow ourselves to have a guide. Tonight, you may be a sheep that is overwhelmed by the weight of the chaos of our world, discouraged, upset, scared, confused, and you need reprieve from the darkest valley. I want to challenge you to draw closer to the shepherd. He will guide you to still waters, to peace. He will provide rest, food. He will help you spend time following him and get to know his voice. And this means dedicating moments to him, to be with him. Trust me when I say you will never regret spending time with the shepherd. You will never regret spending time with Jesus. So I wanna challenge you to spend time with him, to trust him, to follow him. Or maybe tonight you're walking in complete blindness and darkness and there's no guide in your life. You're stumbling, you're tired of fighting. Maybe you're tired of life itself and there's no hope. I want you to know that there is hope and his name is Jesus. Our shepherd has come to seek and save the lost and he is here for you tonight. He loves you. He sees you. He cares for you. Our shepherd is here. So if you need the shepherd in your life tonight, in just a moment, we're going to pray and we're going to ask him to become Lord of your life because I promise you when he's with you, you can fight the battles better. You have strength. You have endurance. When you're weak, he is with you. He's your strength. He is for you. He's not against you. He is with you. So if you'd like to receive Jesus into your life tonight, if you'd like to submit your life to the shepherd, to have someone to guide you, to help you to see things clearly, I want to invite you to pray with me right now. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for the lives that you are touching now, for the hearts that you are mending, for the, the lives that you're restoring to you. God, I pray for those that are hearing this message, God, and, and don't have a relationship with you, God, and, and they're desiring it and they long for it. God, I pray right now, Lord, as they surrender their lives to you, as they say yes to Jesus and no to the world, God, that you would be so present in their situation, because God, we say yes to you and no to the world, because you are our clarity, you are our truth, you are perfection. So Father, we choose you tonight. Night. We believe you died on the cross for our sin. God, to restore us into right relationship with you. And you rose again because you were victorious and you had conquered all. So God, I pray, God, that we would receive you tonight. Receive your goodness. Receive your grace. Amen. Amen. Now, if you just prayed with me and you believe, if you're a first-time believer and you're praying this and you're saying, this is me, this is me, I want you to get in contact with someone tonight, whether that be myself, Pastor Dustin, one of your good friends, your own personal pastor. Talk to somebody. Tell them about the decision for Christ that you have chosen today to follow the Good Shepherd. Because it's worth rejoicing. This is a celebration because this is life. This is choosing life. Tonight, you may be following the shepherd and you need, you need hope, you need direction. I want to pray for you tonight as well. God, I pray for everybody who's listening tonight, who's tuned in. Lord, I pray that we would find you in these chaos moments. We would find you. You would lead us. You would guide us. We would trust you. We would follow you. We would follow your truth. God, I pray for peace over people's lives. I pray for joy. I pray for protection. God, help us to choose you. Help us to choose you. Help us to find moments in each and every day where we can choose you so we can hear your voice, know when you're speaking, and move when you say move. Father, help us tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We pray that this message hit you right in the heart, that you learn from it, that you grow from it, that you let it do something great in your life. We're thankful for what God's doing. Even in quarantine, God is still moving. He's moving in your heart. He's moving in my heart. Let's keep our eyes focused on Him. We'll see you later.